Well, hi, everybody. It's David George Brook, that gratitude guy with another special guest on my gratitude podcast interview regarding the pandemic. And I was thinking about my guest today uh, about when I first met this young man. And he's about half my age. So, of course, he's a young man. And uh, when some about three or four people said, you got to meet this guy. And I finally met him. And we became uh, fast friends, very, very smart, uh, gosh, just all over it type of juggles a ton of balls. My good friend, Steve Hilbert. Steve, welcome to the podcast. Thanks. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. You bet. You bet. Yeah. So I, as I mentioned to, on several of the podcast interviews is that this is really about kind of picking people's brains in some way. So I've got four or five questions for you. And my first one is, is right off the top, it's been five or six weeks now. What's been your best coping mechanism to deal with this uh, pandemic we've all been dealing with? That's a great question. Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. I, I think just uh, being able to get outside in our yard a little bit and get some fresh air has been really helpful. Um, taking, mm -hmm. Making sure I'm taking breaks is also very helpful. Uh, you know, not before this pandemic, I was working from home quite a bit anyway. So from my perspective, it's actually normalized a lot of and justified a lot of my behaviors before. So uh, for us, it's been pretty interesting to, to sort of like allow the world to sort of come to like, this is a, this is a home work environment. Yeah. So from that perspective, I guess keeping that positive attitude has also been pretty helpful for us. Yeah, and you've always so, had yeah. that positive attitude, I think, before or after a pandemic and so forth. And as that gratitude guy, that's kind of my middle name in terms of what's really important to me. Did you notice since this has happened in terms of what you're grateful for, has it changed to what you were grateful for before to what you're grateful for now? Yeah, it, it has indeed. I think it's actually refocused what's important to our family. So um, it's, I've actually, I'm one of these weird ones that have actually really enjoyed the pandemic, I guess. I don't know if you can really say that, you know, yeah. be politically correct about it. But what it's done with my family is we've really talked about what's important, mm -hmm. which is spending time together. And what do we do in that time together? Uh, coming up with games, ideas, figuring out ways we can't be social to, to interact with people using technology. Yeah. Um, having, you know, have, having people to just talk to, uh, reading more books, things mm -hmm. that you, you put off, um, you can fill your day pretty quickly, but also getting a lot of work done in the process. I found that we're very productive as a virtual team right. and uh, there's a lot of time wasted in commutes. So it's pretty nice to be able to not have to commute, go upstairs, mm -hmm. grab, grab food with your family, spend time with them and get back to work. So um, I've, I've, uh, I've kind of like this, this, this life balance, I think, has really come into play during this pandemic. And I think for us, to go, if, after this pandemic, we're going to really question, like, what was important before that we thought was important? And maybe we can cut some of that out uh, because we don't necessarily need it. So that's um, a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. One of the things I mentioned to somebody is it really forces you to realign your priorities. Right. And sometimes maybe there, there's a lot of silver linings in this whole thing. And I know there's a lot of bad stuff and people are dying and we're shelter in place and so forth. But there's a lot of silver linings that have come up, spending more time with, with family, with you and Lisa and the baby and all these different types of things, which are cool. And, and speaking of, as somebody that I've always kidded you about, uh, I got a hard stop at uh, 3.30. I got a hard time. I got to do this. You have a ton of things going on. Any, any thoughts or ideas or tips maybe for somebody who's stuck at home about things that they can do? You mentioned a couple of things. Exercise was certainly good. But other things that they might be doing as long as they're kind of housebound and maybe stuck that might be helpful to them? Yeah, I mean, like I said, maybe open the door or if you've got a balcony or an ability to just open a window even, just get that fresh air and that really helps. I found that meditating and yoga actually helps. Mm -hmm. A morning routine for about 30 minutes uh, really helps in between workouts. Yeah. Uh, so finding, I do a P90X, but I'd only need about this much space to do it. Maybe oh, double wow. the space, like about 12 feet you can get a really good workout. And I think keeping that going, you don't need, need to go to the gym. You can do it at home. Same, yeah. Saying, keeping exercise uh, focused and, and meditative, I think is very helpful to kind of keep yourself focused. And you'd mentioned reading, air. you'd mentioned reading too early, mm -hmm. earlier. What a great way to catch up on reading or kind of cleaning things up or getting some things organized and that type of thing too. Yeah. Learning new skills too. I'm, uh, we actually, my wife and I, uh, we, we developed a, a garden in our back, a food garden. So we oh, nice. have been planting, now we've been harvesting like crazy from it. And uh, that's been a lot of fun learning, some, taking the time to learn new skills, uh, ordering things that you do some honeydew chores around the house. All of this has been a lot of fun. I've, I've learned quite a bit from just taking some time that I would have normally been traveling to right. say, well, what, what can I do to, you know, learn something new? 
And, so. and another question I have, and I don't know if this applies to you as much, because again, you're already quite motivated and, and always moving a hundred directions, but is there anything that you kind of thought right now that, well, boy, once this is over, I mean, we know it's going to be over. We don't know when it's going to be and, and if it's a vaccine or what have you, but at some point it'll be back in stages or it'll be over. Have there been things that you've thought about, boy, when this thing's over, I'm going to kind of hit the ground running and maybe do things differently in my business or even personal life that you might, as you had a chance to think about it as we're all kind of uh, at our homes? You know, no, actually for me, I mean, I thought about it and That's we good. looked at each other and said, we're, kind of living our lives and this pandemic, we can't, the one thing we miss is we're very social people. We miss being at the club. We miss being out with friends, we miss going to theater. Um, so those are, I think we'll make more time to go to theater and go out. Uh, that's right. something that we, you know, we will definitely do. But from a business and life perspective, I think we were fortunate to be, we planned ahead. We, you know, for situations like this or earthquakes. Uh, so we were ready when it happened to shelter at home. Mm -hmm. um, we're fortunate that our remodel has been done. <laughs> so we've got space in our home to move around. Yeah. So we're really blessed that way. And I think very fortunate. Um, but we have some friends that have been in small quarters and, uh, that can be difficult, including my mom who's in a small condo in Seattle. Oh, yeah. Um, so right. we've been keeping her busy and keep her online and every so often she'll come by and just come from the house to our, to, to take care of our, our, our 15 month old. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's good to get that social interaction if you can. Yeah. Um, but yeah. looking forward, I would say, you know, I think it's a good time. It's a really good time to think you're right. This will come, we will come through this, but there will be another time where this happens again yeah. in our future. So it's yeah. good to reassess what's important to your family. It's good to start planning and good to have uh, an idea of what you really want to do. Um, yeah. And then see, see how you might go about getting it. Um, See, there, there's an example, Steve, of a great point that nobody has mentioned, which I'm so glad you did when I talk about nuggets or tips or whatever, but nobody's mentioned this is going to happen to this is going to happen again. There was the Spanish flu in 1917, and here we are in 2020. And, and you're, I haven't even thought about it. You're exactly right. This will happen again. So mm -hmm. what does that tell me in terms of realigning priorities? Maybe people will be ready next time or readier, and then 80% of the country won't be living paycheck to paycheck. They'll realize they've got to get some savings or whatever. So because the way this whole virus thing goes, as I understand it, it's, uh, it's not a matter of if, but it's, it's when it will happen again. So that's a great point. That's true. I'm in the biomedical industry, as you know, and yeah. it's interesting. I've been really involved with it because one of our sister companies is working on a vaccine as we speak. And what's really neat about this is for the first time, I think, in, in recent history, the whole globe is collaborating to, make, to fight this pandemic, which is really yeah. cool to see. The open source on every data set that's coming. No one's concerned oh. about you know, intellectual property rights. They just want to solve the problem. Right. So from that, it gives you hope that like as a, as a species, no matter where we are in this country or this world, we're, we can come together to, to fight things and, and it makes the world a bit smaller. I'm hopeful that in the future, uh, we'll be able to tackle these much faster with better protocols in place. And maybe we'll just realize the world's a little bit smaller than we thought. And uh, that's, yeah, a that's a good point. So, that's a good point. Whoever thought that open source would be something that could be work to our benefit when people are so concerned with IP and all that kind of thing. So that's mm -hmm. a great point. So, so last question. And, and again, I know you pretty well, but I, I like this question as my last uh, comment question is, do you have sort of a quote or a thought or a mantra or a way of thinking that is kind of your overarching thing that gets you through life that you think, oh, I always go back to this. Now we go through a tough time. I go, I mean, I've heard people say this too shall pass, but do you have something that kind of represents th something that helps you uh, just normally in life and then through a tough time like this or a challenging time like this? Yeah, I think there's three quotes really that stick to my mind that are kind of define it. And in our household, we have a thing that's called positive vibes only. And it's kind of, you say it in an accent, you know, like, like from the islands, because I, you know, I've been to St. Thomas quite a bit and I have family there. So positive vibes only that we, we just go back to that mantra. Hey, you know, we'll get through this. Positive vibes only is number one. Number two, remember that my dad was saying, there's no disaster so great. You can't turn it into some kind of an advantage. And like I said, in this pandemic, I'm seeing a lot of things happening. It's very stressful for a lot of workers out there. They're doing an amazing job combating this. Wow. Uh, healthcare workers, first responders. It's, it's amazing what, what they're going through and my heart goes out to them. And it's great to see all the collaboration, all hands on deck across the globe to try to fight this thing together. Yeah. So that's, that's been really cool. And then the final one for me is life's a voyage to be enjoyed and, and there'll be problems to be solved along the way, but just make sure you're enjoying the voyage. So, yeah, excellent, yeah. excellent. Well, just as I suspected, 
many good nuggets there from Mr. <laughs> Hilbert. So I appreciate it so much, Steve. Thank you so much for being part of this podcast. It's a pleasure. Thank you, David. Good luck. You See you soon. Yeah. Take care.